Our investigation again, like an assumption. So that's why I said that we should just think wide. That we should not pin it. We should not pin it to DNA alone. Because my own fear is, if this DNA comes out to be the person, are we not starting a new DNA clue? Are we not starting a new 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 clue? Are we not starting Sir, I know we are there. just analyzing. We are just we are yes. just analysts here. Listen, sir, listen, yes. sir. The DNA, sir, listen, sir. The DNA is just a way. It's one of a thousand ways of determining the cause. Okay, it is one of the thousand ways, which leads to my next question that I wanted to ask, aristocrats, sir. Is there any way or manner in this case that you sense that I say negligence by the police to? investigate the cause of death of Mobad. What are the instances of, is there any, do you sense negligence on part of the police? And what are the uh, instances of negligence that you sense? This is what I'm going to say. I, I would say from the beginning of this matter, the police failed the citizenry, number one. We know the plot the part people around Mubarak played in announcing his death. Uh, that is everything we all know. But the police, when the father said, he said, let's go to police station to incident this death. Number one, the, the people around him, because he doesn't know the place, they took him far from where it happened. They took him to Oniru police station. Oniru is far from where he was. Oniru is around the um, main lake. So you will pass Lucky Face One and all that, and where he lives is around that job, I guess. Now they've jumped one or two police stations. However, it is still within the same command. Police formation has command. It's like six. You have police posts. Those are small places where they put within estates. You will see a like a police post. You have divisional police station. You have area command. You have state command, you have zonal command, and you have federal command. Now, for example, you are still within the same command, and they told you the address where they are coming from. It doesn't mean you cannot incident it. As a matter of fact, it is death. What if the person died on Third Mainland Bridge, and they were trying to bring the person down, and they saw the nearest police station, and they reported to you? Are you saying that you will tell them, go back to Todd Bailan Bridge and be looking for a police station around that place? You can't do that. As police, your responsibility is irrespective of what is. You don't know. Incident it first. And now, follow the procedure. It's like a crime. Robbery is going on. Police van is passing. It is for another state. But robbery is going on. Your job is to ensure that you fall that crime. That is the first thing, like first aid. After, you follow the procedure. We were the field. Now, since they failed on that, they came to exhume the body nine days after, after outcry. Immediately they exhumed the body. They told people that they were doing uh, post-mortem, whatever. But it seems police went to sleep on the matter. After they interviewed people in the first month and they came with their preliminary report. It seems after the preliminary report that there's no form of investigation going on. What they then did was to focus on the three suspects in their custody, coercing them, intimidating them, and trying to make them say they are the one that committed the crime. And I'm taking this conclusion based on Prime Boy's petition against the IPU. It shows those things that happen. So, the police are trying to do proper investigation. I don't believe so. Because after their preliminary report, did they come outside to give us another report that this is where the... For crying out loud, it's an homicide case, the way they tagged it. What have they achieved? They didn't achieve anything. After the preliminary report that took more than a month before they came out to tell us, people have, have to cry out to say, police, what have you done so far before they came out with that report? And they came with a report that is filled with a number of errors. Talking about profusely bleeding. When profusely bleeding was not even established. 
from the crime of sin, the way all the testimony have gone. So there are a lot of things. And we can then say that is police compromised because we might not say for, for certain, but we can simply infer from all the events that we've seen. Was is police compromised? If the IPO can be forcing a, a suspect to accept a weapon that he committed a crime, it means police was compromised because that is not ethical. You understand what I'm saying? It is not ethical. If police would take donkey years to give the public that made an outcry for them to exhume the body, and you are not coming to the public to give them timely report on your investigation, it means the police have compromised. If the police, when Mobad wrote a petition that with evidences, they were having a shoot, and someone came there with dangerous weapons, machete, etc., etc., to the scene, and you did not even detain those people for going to some people's place of business to disrupt their business, to go with talk, to attack people. Is that what police should overlook? Did not even punish these people that were on the petition. Did not punish the people that the video showed that they went there. And that thing was on social media everywhere. And police let them go since this young man wrote those pet that petition. And those people came, they talked, they went, and they had the audacity to write a counter petition that the young man was owing them money. And police allowed it to go. It means police failed this young man even while he was alive because he felt unprotected. And who will you wrong to? It is police. So why would we say police had failed or police was compromised? We will say this thing and we have the right to say it. If police feel they are not compromised, let them do the right thing. We will forget their mistake. We are not saying that it is by force that A or B must be the guilty person. But let us see the procedure. People have talked about telephone forensic. You don't need someone's phone to do his telephone forensic. All you need is the phone number. And all you need is to get a court order to go to the telephone uh, provider and ask for data and you analyze those data. It is done all over the world. And Nigerian police do that. You analyze audio, you analyze the text, you analyze whatever data thing that is there for you to see if it will link to this thing. You, they need to do it. They nobody ought to tell them. If they are doing it by now, I expected that police, irrespective of the judicial inquest, police investigation still continues. Judicial inquest does not stop your investigation. Because if you find any lead, you act on it. Are they acting on it? They are Haven't not. they gone to sleep as usual? This is the complaint of the citizen. And we, we have the right to think otherwise. Because if they are acted normal or acted rightly, we will be saying, oh, police is doing their job. And we have seen police work. We've seen them unravel cases like this. It is not strange to apply. So what is wrong with this? That will be my response to you, sir. Good, thank you. So, uh, one more uh, submission. There is this uh, kind of mental uh, stuff that I wanted to, I wanted to, uh, uh, to shine, to shed light on. So, in the back and forth between the justice camp and the anti-justice camp, what the anti-justice camp tend to always put forward is, as long as we do not have any evidence that. Uh, Umi murdered Mubad, then we cannot even regard eyewitnesses evidence or we cannot make inferences or read between the lines. So they use that to uh, stop a lot of thought processes of those who are in the justice camp. They say, if you don't have the evidence, you can infer. You can, you can, you can, uh, in fact, that Bumi is a prime suspect. So, and meanwhile, the justice camp is like, she's a prime sus suspect. And the other camp are saying, as long as you don't have an evidence, like, that points to the fact that she did it, or read between the lines, or uh, whatever, then you cannot use even eyewitness reports, and you cannot infer. So, if you get what I'm saying, what do you 
uh, say Africa because now they are saying that even if you have eyewitnesses talking about it, uh, you can't really uh, regard the report of eyewitnesses. I mean, they're making some statement to disregard eyewitness reports that, and they say it's invalid. So what do you say to that? This, this is what I was going to say. You see, I laugh when people come with a different position. Number one, what do we need to establish? You see, there is something they call prejudicial in cases. When a matter is in court, if it's in a court of law, you see, it is not good for people to, deliberate, to discuss it. But for the public, public can discuss it. Because if it is something of matter of interest, public can talk about it. It's the public opinion. And that is what you call public opinion. The job of the court and the prosecuting agent is to shape the public opinion by coming with the fact. There are cases where people assume a, at the end of the day, after a thorough investigation and court process, judicial process, it came out that it is C, not even B. Then the public will accept it because they now see the light. It is the job of these authorities to come and ensure that the public have given the fact and they stay with the fact. Now, this matter we are talking about is yet to get to the court of law. We are still at the investigative state. Therefore, anybody can infer anything. It is the job of the prosecuting authority, that is the police, to do proper investigation. Listen to people. Because as we are talking, police are also gathering information. That is how it should be. If people are not talking about it at all, it is a problem. You see, when police is doing investigation, they will say any member of the public that has information to help them to resolve this case should come forward and give them to you. Which means you needed the public to help you because police are not spirits. They get information. So if the public do not, or the public did not, or the public is not discussing this matter, how will you get the information? In a state like Nigeria, where people are afraid that when you even report a crime to police, the person you recrime, you, you reported, will come after you when the person leaves the jail, or will send people after you and say, now you go report me. The question is, how did the person know? So the public itself have that phobia of reporting direct to the police. Now, if that is established, and, 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 and that is not news in Nigeria, if that is established, then what should the police do? Police should listen when people are discussing, pick some points and explore those points. If they are not doing it, it means they are not working. Now, if some people now come and say you must see evidence, who is supposed to get evidence? Is it the public or the police? That is the question I'd like to give to them. If it is police that should give the evidence, let the police listen to what people are saying. Let them go and look for evidence. It is not the people that will look for evidence for police. Exactly. The people will provide information to the police, mm. and police will crystallize those information and bring it and, and, and make it evidence. So for those people saying, if you don't have evidence, it's people. The only thing I would tell people is they should use the word alleged, presumed, you know, every word matters. You will not come out emphatically and say, oh, this person killed this person. No. If the person is still a suspect, you say the person is the suspect in the murder of this person. You are not totally saying the person committed the crime because a suspect is not guilty until proven so in a competent court of jurisprudence. So if you do not, if a court do not pronounce someone guilty, you don't pronounce the person guilty. Even the police will not. He will say you are a suspect. Because at the end of the day, after the investigation, a suspect might not be a suspect. A suspect can even turn to a star witness for the state. Now, telling people to come with evidence is, I would say it doesn't make sense. What we should be saying is, let's continue to discuss, let's continue to look at things. As we are talking, let police continue to listen and analyze those facts that people are talking about, crystallize them and get evidence that will make them to pick the criminal so that an innocent person will not be punished for a crime they've not committed. So that the court, we will not waste the time of the court by taking people to court that at the end of the day, they will not be guilty. We should take people that at the end of the day, there are evidences and verifiable evidences, undisputable evidences that will say they committed a crime. That is how we should work. In, in, in Western nations, they will be following criminal for years. When they double the criminal, 
when they interrogate you, you talk all your rubbish. They will now be coming with the evidences small by small and say, we saw this. They already have it. They have video. They have everything connecting you. Mm. This one, fine, is an homicide case. They didn't plan for it. But there are a lot of... Nigerian police is very good when it comes to homicide across Africa. So I don't expect less from them. But the way they've gone about this matter from the beginning, it's giving Yoruba will say, It is looking as if there is compromise somewhere, somewhere. Now, it is our right to feel so. It is their right to convince us, to tell us. It's like people in a relationship. If you feel your partner is not doing something and you, you know, and, and, and if you feel your partner is not doing something and you are complaining about it, you expect your partner to adjust. But if your partner is telling you that this is the truth and you refuse to accept your partner's truth, then it's on you. It's not on your partner. Until you find an evidence that your partner, you know, a verifiable one to say your partner. But for, okay, for benefit of that, I accept. So in this case, we as the public, we can only give information. It is the police that has the power the technology, the training to crystallize our information and turn it to evidences for them to get a criminal. But to say, until we have evidence. If we have evidence, so why do we go to police? If we have evidence, we should go to court straight now and say, court, we have evidence. My Lord, I will tell our lawyer, make sure the court aligns with the evidence out. And we go to court. Why do we need police? That is what it means. But we need police. Let them do their job. Thank you very much, Mr. Aristocrat. The last question I want to put across to you is this. Do you personally think Wome is a prime suspect? And how and why? So no. why is it that there is so much heat on Wumi and there is less heat on the rest, the other people in the house, like Adora, uh, the Arusha, and his remaining crew? That's all. You see, this is what I'm going to say. You see, in relationships, once you have relationships, either parents, children relationship, platonic relationship, uh, workspace relationship, or love affair relationship. The closest that is regarded as the closest partner in situations like this has a lot of burden of responsibilities. And because they have that burden of responsibility, people expect a lot from them to help them to unravel the cause of death of anyone. Now, if these persons or these subjects are not forthcoming, with what we give clarity to what happened, people begin to suspect them. And I think that is the position Wumi is. If, for example, they said it was a nurse that injected him, that he died, the question would be, you took him to the hospital and they pronounced him brought him dead. And they advised you to take him to the morgue. You took him to another hospital. They told you the same thing. In the course of doing that, even when you know that he was lifeless, did you call the security in your estate to apprehend the nurse and take the nurse to the nearest police station? Pending the time, maybe you took the person to hospital and you are able to resuscitate the person? Did you do that? That is first question. If you did not do that, that is a question mark. I will not say she's guilty, but I will give some pointer, which will help everybody. Now, that is a question mark. Has the closest, the wife, as it were, the mother of his child, the person that you slept in the same room and he was sick and all those things happened. When the doctor advised you to take him to the mug, why didn't you take him to the mug? Why didn't you ask the doctor, okay, if you're taking him to the mug, can you keep him here for 24 hours before we take him to the mug so that we arrange, we pay for it? They will. They'll keep him there. Will they give you document to say they are the one that certified that he was there? They will. And you cannot, if they now tell you, you can take it to mock alone or go to police station. You go to police station. A police officer will follow you to the hospital and say that the person was in the hospital. They give you the statement. Follow the, you can't tell me because you are bereaved, your mind shut down. If your mind shut down, you should not see where you are going. Now, you took the body. You took it home. And when you took it home, a lot of people came to the scene, which means you have time to tell the world that he was dead, you had time to announce it to his associate, everybody were in his compound, coming to say he was dead. Is that not suspicious? Were you not supposed to take him to, to hospital? And you are not an old school. You are not a 70-year-old, 90-year-old, 60-year-old person that might think we go the natural, we go the uh, other way. 
you are a Gen Z. So why did you apply your Gen Z law? And you are living in a, in a urban city, urban area of the city, where you understand the importance of medical uh, institution. So another question mark. And things that happen there after, authorities, etc. Another question mark. And after you buried the guy, and you guys now began another fiasco. Your own sister came out accusing, casting a passion on the father of the disease. And you acted as if you were not part of the scene. But from the time he was carried in the ambulance till you got to Ikorudu, you were part of them. The wife. You were at the mall. You saw everything that happened. You saw the coffin. You saw everything. Why didn't you object? Why don't you say that as the wife, I put my feet down. He must stay in the mortuary. Okay, the mortuary rejected him. Let's go back to police station. Why did you, if it doesn't have about LRI, LRS, no, we're very sure. What poor coming? This not poor coming. Or not good or the Why don't you put your feet down? Why should it be after he's dead? That is when you are now making noise. People are fighting for you. Are you fighting at the right time? Or you're fighting at the late time? Why should it be the public that need to shout? For him to be exhumed. Were you not the one that had the primary responsibility to have spoken to the authority for his body since you suspected you were killed? You see, these are questions, questions. I'm not even talking about pattern. Things that happen. Oh, yes, we have lost the signal. You're gonna lose the signal. Okay, Spock. Hello. So for me, Gina, why would we, would you come out and tell people that if you know what my father-in-law has done, you will stone him to death? No, you don't need that. Everybody's grieving. So she has a primary responsibility as the wife and the mother of his child to ensure that. Someone injected my husband. Or let's put the as assumption. Someone fought with my husband when we went out. And that led to his death. It is not the public that should have called the attention of the authority to you. It is you. If not you, his brother was in the house. His cousin or nephew was in the house. Or uncle. He's feeding all of you. And your breadwinner died like that. And none of you fought a week after he was buried to ensure this thing changed. What are we talking about? If the state did not exhume this body, do you think we will be where we are? They would have been doing investigation blindly. They would have. It is the exhumption of this body by the state that scattered the plan. Because I believe the plan was to be casting a special on different people that say, now you cause him, now you cause him, now you cause him. If you know, say, now you cause him. Why the person who injected the body in the first place? No day police custody. Saying, oh, she was a quack nurse in the first place. Oh, she injected. Even if he had injury, does that mean you should kill him? If he had injury, can't you take him to a proper hospital for his injury to be treated so that he will be alive? At the end of the day, we only have infection. Do you now have to bring a quack nurse to inject him and kill him? And you did not even you know, create scene and take the person to police field. So for me, these are questions. So it is left for people supporting or not supporting to look at the facts and ask the vital questions. Before we get to paternity or no paternity, before we get to what Boba sang about or not sang about, the beginning where things done right. If they are not done right, you cannot begin to bring all those things to support your position. And this is what has happened. Don't give you a little bit if there is no space on the wall, a lizard cannot penetrate. That is a space on the wall. You created the room. So deal with it. That is what I will say. Thank you. Um, sorry, sir. Let me just quickly say, um, the aristocrat, I think I like your brilliant analysis and I like all the angles you have exposed us to. Um, I, want, I just want to digress a little bit. And I think our system has actually failed us. Because like in a same climb, if I take a dead body to the hospital, the first thing the hospital will do after certifying that uh, body dead, they will call a police on that spot in the same climb. In the same climb also, if the wife refused to call the police, people around will witness that death in order to save themselves 
from any any com form of complicity they will usually call the police but you know why a lot of them will not call the police because even the person who calls the police on something he sees happening will be indicted by the police it has happened to me and it has happened to a lot of us probably we saw a scene a, a crime scene and we're trying to call the police and the next thing they turn you to a witness of what you are just trying to report that's number two then number three is the fact that i think um, the police actually probably know what happened to uh, Mubat in their investigation but because the issue has been fracalized and sectionalized and a lot of uh, um, um, factions have happened. This one is team A, team B, team C. In order not to cause a public uproar, they will say, okay, let's make all the whole party uh, see themselves as win-win, lose-lose. And we're going to say nothing yeah, nothing happened to this guy. Because if they say, okay, it is uh, this person that did it, the other team will attack this person. If they say this is the person that did it, the other team will attack this person. So I think going forward, when we have issues like this, instead of us, any, any of those uh, uh, taking opinion to take side, we should all, first of all, go for a common front and, and ask for who exactly is involved. We don't want to know if it is his wife or this brother or the father or anything. Once we have established... Hold, hold on, sir. I'll, 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 once we have established that, then we cannot start attacking the person who has who is being indicted. But the system has failed us. We are agreed, and those of us who are analysts ourselves, including me, we have also failed this case to make the police now hide under something to ask to actually now kill this case, Senator, which I believe the court will help us out. Thank I understand. You. I mean, Senator, you okay. The police should not Crocodile. do the investigation and establish the truth because they don't want to fracas. Because they don't want fracas. I mean, bro, you brought my, you brought my head, I don't understand. Okay. I, said, I never said they don't want fracas. I said the issue has been fracalized to the extent we start pointing to different people. We start changing our, our narrative. Because so, the police should be objective without uh, making the investigation based on Senator. the form of fracas or not. Does, does fracas influence the police investigation? Senator, Senator, just forget that you just forget. Senator, just forget that you asked that one. Let's ask oh my that God. one. Let's Frankers. move to the next. Police will take consider uh, cognizance of fracas and don't do their job and then play games. That is Nigerian police. I'm talking about. I'm no, talking no, no. About police Nigerian. is police. Either Nigerian or American or British. If it is in America, where I live, we're calling them to do. Example, there was a there was a case where I live here. A prostitute, a prostitute was killed. The and the police came on the spot, condoned the area, sealed up everywhere, and took sample tests of 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 of, of your of your uh, saliva of everybody in that vicinity. It was not even the suspect that called the police. It was just an eyewitness who said she, she suspect somebody is dead in that house. Within the no, next five minutes, no, the police were there. No, that's not what we're talking about. You're saying you are you're inferring that the police should. I said in Nigerian setting, I said in Nigeria, no, because no, I've seen it happen several times, you can't, where you, a case you, is you in a fracas. You cannot okay, now, country. Okay, sir, look at this, uh, look at this, um, um, Senator, you can't look at this, um, uh, SAS, SAS that just happened. Hold on, hold on, Senator. The police, Senator, you can't use country. would have indicted some people who killed uh, innocent Nigerians, but they didn't make it public. You cannot use, you can't use country, okay, or the, or the, you can't use the, uh, the frailties or the weaknesses in the system to justify the police negligence. It's impossible. You think the police has their own job and they must do their job. And their job and their result that they put out should not be based on any consideration of fracas or not. And that's what we're asking them to do. They should come and do their job and nobody should support the police for not coming out to do their job because of any fracas or not. The fracas is for the public. It has nothing to do with police. Uh, in a case like this, is it appropriate for the prime suspects or the people or the wife or the brother or the sibling or anybody who was at the crime scene, is it okay for the person to leave, you know, a, the country? Then another thing I want to ask is, she confessed about seven people were in the room. She didn't say it in her CTC, right? She has been saying every other thing, but this is in Sarah Reporters. Based on what I read... She said that there were seven people with the nurse and Mubad in the room when he was being injected. And I'm wondering, how come those seven people weren't listed? Why haven't we seen their, you know, testimonies? Because they need to testify. We need to have them at the court to be questioned. So what do you think about this? Because that, I'm, I'm just adding the parts where maybe the, the officers, I'm thinking that they might have failed. And I hope they are actually looking into it to correct themselves. So please, in, in, a, in the same climate, 
in the same climb. You see, all those seven people, if they have international passports, it will have been seized by now. And they will be under surveillance. So even with me going to the airport to seek for probably a travel stuff, which was rejected, shouldn't have even come in place in the first place. And that's why I said the system keeps failing us as citizens. Because if somebody dies within your vicinity, everybody, even your neighbor, becomes a suspect until it is established that, okay, you are free, you are prime, or you will be a star witness. But as it is today, like I said, I will still say it again. The police have indirectly concluded their investigation on this case and trying to wash their hands off and say, hey, we don't know who kills it. If you know who kills it, then you go ahead and do your own investigation and, 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 and follow up the case. So I think that's why I said the police and the system have failed us and they keep failing us. So what we need to do to look at how do we now strengthen the system so that we can get justice without even doing all this, going through all this long process of, of, of just looking for who killed somebody within eight or nine months and every clues are being analyzed and exposed and the police is looking the other way around as if they are not even existing. It is, it is the police that should come out and do their job. If you, if you say that the police have somehow concluded their investigation, then it's their job to also make the investigation public, just as they made the preliminary report public, and to clear some of the misconceptions and errors that uh, have been stated in the preliminary report. It's the job of the police to come out, and I don't think it's wise for us to come out and be, try and be making excuses for the police. They should do their job. I am not making, I'm telling you what is in reality in Nigeria of today. If I were to be elsewhere, my, I have confidence that I will get justice. Even if I am not a citizen of a country, example, US now, even if I'm just an ordinary person, if I call the co cops, if you threaten me that I'm going to deal with you, I have confidence that if I call the cops today, in the next five minutes, they will arrive. But as a citizen of Nigeria, can I call the cops if somebody is even pointing gun at me? That's where we, that's the, that's the, that's where we find ourselves today. Of course, we can't call the yeah, police. When, when, when was that wrote petition? Someone, someone, it's because it's involving if someone, people someone, that matter. Uh, that's why he died. He died point, down. If someone points a gun at you or beats you or assaults in public, it's a job to report to the police so that you can have a record of it. We and just, we just, just come. Can I, just can I, it's up to can the I attempt to, to, okay. the question of the lovely lady? Um, this is what I'm going to say. Rumi is not a suspect in this matter, according to the police preliminary report. She is the complainant. Now, usually... When you have suspects and they are not in detention, there are conditions because police will tell them, please don't go out of the jurisdiction. And if you have to, please inform us. They always do that. Now, that is if you are a suspect or they see that you have vital information to give, but they are not making you a suspect. If you are a suspect, you must be reporting. If you are on bail, you must be reporting at a certain day at a certain time for them to know that you are still around and if you are sick you will communicate such to them that is how it is done now talking about women will have traveled women can travel women is not a suspect women is a complainant but i think what she would do if she's to travel she will inform the ipu that hey i need to travel oh madam why are you traveling i have medical something da, 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 da. You can go, but they've been informed. They will tell her, give us the address of where you are going, give us your phone number. If we need to reach to you on this matter, we will, because she's a complainant. So, Wumi is in a category of a complainant, not a suspect or a potential suspect, the way this case is. It is only in people's analysis that they believe that she ought to be, if not a suspect, a potential suspect. So there is no law anywhere in the world that will say someone that does is not a suspect or has a criminal case in court don't have the right to travel. Women can travel from Lagos to anywhere in Nigeria. As long as she's still in Nigeria, no problem. Police will just want to reach out to her. Even a suspect, if a suspect has medical condition and they need to fly the suspect abroad, the suspect will tell the IPU, and they will do what they have to do to save the person's life. They will grant it. But that is in such case. So we just have to understand that. Uh, what was the second question? I forgot. Okay, so the, thank you very much, though. It was because of the kind of scene that happened. Now I asked you the question, but I'll accept it what you said. Yeah, second, what is your second question? 
is that the, um, she claimed that there were seven people, according to her story in Sahara Reporters, that those seven people were with Mubad when he was treating. Yes. She didn't mention treating. We're talking about she and Adura, you know, interswitching with fried rice and Mubad. All right. So my question is this, that why haven't the, you know, police Sorry. So the seven people that she stated that, you know, were with Mubad when the nurse was treating because we haven't seen their testimonies or, you know, their own um, interview. They should have been questioned. Why haven't the police done that? And do you think reading all these things they will be able to do that before the next citizen now this is what i'm going to say to this police said that they've interrogated about 26 people possibly everybody in his house at that time and other people now if during their interrogation they did not establish any of them to be complicit in the death there is no need for them to detain them or categorize them as suspects. Now, let's move to the inquest. If the state, that is the DPP, because the state is also there, and every other lawyers that come in this case, see the need that any of these other seven people should be cross-examined. They are the one to apply to the court to say, we want A, B, C, D. Who from the statement of the wife said they were present when the nurse was administering medication to him to come and give us the account. So it is not the police that will say, go and give testimony. It is those who want to find out things that we demand from them. And I think uh, lawyer Wahab Shitu, with the last thing I've heard, have made an application for a number of people to come and give their testimonies. So we hope possibly part of those people are there and they will be able to give um, uh, information about what they know. But it is nobody's fault if X people do not come to the inquest. It is the duty of the legal uh, practitioners to request for witnesses that they feel they want to cross-examine or to give, uh, to give uh, account of what happened. Do you understand? I hope I've been able to answer that. Yeah, thank you. I do appreciate that. But anyway, that first one of the traveling thing, I remember there's an incident recently of a pastor that reported that, you know, the wife even reported herself that she was going to commit suicide. And people are like on the case. And as people are like protesting, they're already restricting that no movement because now they need to investigate because even the one who claimed to be the loved one could be the one that done this stuff. But yes, they, yes. You see, that is a different case. Though. You see, in this case, they've already established suspects. Suspect have been established. Yes, in some she's not a suspect. The wife is not a suspect in this case. She's a complainant. We go back to that video. The police commissioner, when he was reading his report, said Mr. That's Joseph true. Alopa and Miss Wumi are the complainants, the two of them. So mm -hmm. they did not tag them as suspects. So if they were suspect, you know for now. Prime boy, the nurse, and spending her suspect. They have bail condition. They are supposed to report to the police on a certain date at some certain time every week. Mm. If they are traveling, they are supposed to. So that is to suspect. But Wumi is not a suspect. She's a complainant. If they establish that she's a suspect, of course, they will place her under the same condition. But if she's not... They don't. Now, let us look at the petition of Prime Boy now. If in the petition of Prime Boy, the investigation established that Wumi is guilty of what Prime Boy petition about, they can place her, she can be a suspect now. She can be detained and later be granted bail and her movement will be restricted. That is a different matter. But on the case of the death of Mubad, so far so good, except if in the next hour or in the next few minutes police come out to say the wife is now a suspect if she's not her movement cannot be restricted she's free she's free to move wherever she desires so we only inform them that uh, i might be traveling if you need anything these are my contacts please get back to me
Okay, brings me to this part where you talked about uh, prime boy and the nurse. Based on the toxicology, they seem the according to the toxicology, it seems as if like they cleared them. Yes. Suspects. You're right. And they still travel as well. No, no, they can't travel. See, but because they are free. Not... Yes, yes, yes. Now the toxicology is a conclusive, but the toxicology came with some other fact. The toxicology has established that all the suspects are not suspects. So it is left for their lawyers when they go to criminal court. If the police do not change their status from suspects and they took them to court like that, it is now the responsibilities of the lawyers of this suspect to say, come, your medical report did not in any way link my client to this crime. Therefore, they should be discharged and acquitted. And the judge will look at it and the judge will announce. So the first job is for the police to change their status and say, from all the evidences we've gathered now, these people are not the suspect. We are now looking into different direction. Or they, con they, took, they take them to court. When they get to court, their lawyers will clear them. Okay, so I'm looking at different direction now. The wife, everybody, including even if it's pain, will all be like, okay, you can't move anywhere till we sort this. I'm sorry, this no, might be... No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is only the suspect. Nobody, police, are, except police comes tomorrow. You see, once the inquest is finished, police can still continue some other investigation because they should be moving to court. Police can now come before the court in their charge picture and say, oh, X person is no more our suspect based on based on you know activities of investigation we've been able to say this person is not a suspect but if they did not they all go to court they'll trash it out but if someone is not a suspect police cannot say the person cannot move now i am not a suspect now i'm not a suspect why would you say i'm not or i am not a principal witness to say you restrict my movement i'll sue you to court that is violation of my fundamental human right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Um, so, uh, all right. Yeah, I mean, um, Aristocrat, I just want to ask one more question. Because in this case, we have a... Mubad was assaulted by Sam Larry and his crew. And he wrote a petition as regards that. And the police did nothing about it. We, a few days ago... Well, let's say yesterday, I think for yesterday, we have a similar scenario on Prime Boy. And I believe he has written a petition as regards that. What could, let's say, let, let's substitute Prime Boy as Mr. X. What would Mr. X do if the police refused to take action, just as they refused to take action during Mobat's case? Now, this is what I'm going to say. You see, there is a difference between Mobad's situation and that of Prime Boy. In Mobad's situation, he identified the leaders of the arsenals, the attackers. He identified them and named about three or four people in his petition to say these are the people. And he also put there that they claimed, according to his petition, that they were sent by someone. Now, that is different. In, in case of um, Prime Boy, he, he, I don't know if he identified any of his attackers. Now, himself and his lawyers have gone to police and they've made official uh, uh, statements. And part of it, they will ask, do you suspect anybody? If he has any suspect, they would have told the police. It is now the job of police, one, to protect him. Two, being a suspect in a murder case, it calls for them to protect him. Three, it is the their job to investigate to know what happened. But I believe Prime Boy is, a, is, is the smartest of all the suspects. He's the smartest. Like when I interviewed him uh, last week, he said he used to have a lawyer that if you want to talk, you say, don't talk, don't talk. Ah, he said, which one is this? I will not talk. I don't want you in here. He went to look for another lawyer. It means he knows his rights. He wants to play his name. Now, if he is that person, I believe the lawyer he got now, which everybody saw his performance at the inquest, we guide him a right. And then we ensure that he's protected. Now, the lawyer, because the lawyer is now his lawyer, unlike Mubad, we now intercede 
and old police accounting, and also police knowing that they now have a reputation in the public with their failure to act on time. They also know that the police, the public, will hold them accountable. So I then will assume they will act right. That is what I would assume. But in case they don't act right, we are the public now. We will, we will come after them the way we used to. That is what I would say. Thank you much, Mr. Aristo. Your conclusion so, has been Aristo, uh, Crocodile. Yeah. Crocodile, yeah. I'm, can I say something? Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, you see the reason why, you see the reason why we may want to drag Papa Mabad to her side, to, to join her, to, to chase Shadow. Papa Mabad was very, very clever to refuse to join her because they are both complainant. But due to Papa Mobad is wise. He said, who, whom are we chasing? When, what, when the people that is involved are the one that, you know, a, 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 a complainant, and she want to drag her, drag him into her own team. He refused. That is the thing. That is the thing. Papa is very clever. That evil genius could have dragged him, confused him, to come and join them, whom are they fighting for? Fighting for fighting who? Fighting empty thing. At the end of the day, they will not get anything. Why the finger? Why the, the, the main person sitting there, you know, pretending? So I give Baba credit for that. I give him credit for that. He did well. Thanks for submission, um, King Jog. Uh, Aristo, I am going to say that Mubad's lawyer was is not as um, also contributed to what to the circumstance to the to the way the police handled the case. Or let's say the lawyer is not as aggressive and as smart as a primary lawyer in advising Mubad to speak out as regards the condition that he was going through as regards the molestation before he led to his death. Well, you see, we can say so, and we will say it with caution, because we don't know what transpired. But we can also say that it was very counterproductive for a lawyer that your client was bullied, bullied, abused, subjected to, to ridicule as it was done to Mubad that we all saw in the video and it wasn't a drama it was a real life thing and we've seen a number of videos of him being beaten, bullied crying out, we've listened to his music where he's crying out for help and his lawyer did not follow up with his petition are we to say that Mubad told him not to go after it again? Or as a lawyer, he should have told Mubad, Mr. Man, law is my forte, and I think we need to follow this too. So we will blame him for not fighting enough for his client. We will blame him, even if he's not on retainer, he's on a job. We will blame him because as a professional, you are supposed to increase your earning. And the more you walk, the more you earn. Are we saying it's complacent? Are we saying they wrote a petition and did not follow up and accepted anything that came from them? Are we saying that recording these people, attacking him with machete, with bats, with everything, is a good thing or is a norm in our society? And a lawyer that wrote a petition, petition did not follow through since last year before this guy died in September the following year. You know, you know, it doesn't make sense. For me, it doesn't make sense. The timeline of not following it up. If you think that police station is not persecuting your case as you want it, you take it to an eye They are rich. He has a record label. Why is the label not taking it up? Because he is their artist. He is their money. He is the one making money for the record label. Why didn't they take it up? If they think their lawyer is, uh, lit is, is not a litigation lawyer, a criminal lawyer, why not get one? So for me, 
the people around him failed him. They failed to help him to persecute, to seek redress when he was assaulted. They failed to help him to use the law to his advantage. And at the end of the day, the ultimate apple, he died in the process. So I blame all this thing. It's a sad thing for me. It's a sad thing. Because seeing all those videos of being between here and there, here and there, and he had opportunity of the continuation of the bullying and beating assault on him, and he has an opportunity, he recorded one live, and there are principles that were shown in it, and he wrote a petition regarding that. Are we to say that he has not followed the, the law? He followed the law to complain, and the law failed him. The system failed him. They failed him. I'm talking about, we called him, he did not come. What is that? You saw a video of some people going to attack some people, you left them. They are still gallivanting, still singing those. And there are a number of videos of these elements in name, even on some other people, on how they beat people, on how they order people to be beaten on the streets. They are all there on the social media. It shows this is a pattern of these people. Should police allow such people to continue to foster in the society? Come on, man. They failed him. That's what I'm saying. They failed him. Aside from whatever happened in his house, they failed him. And if I'm his family, I will sue the Nigeria police. I will sue them. Thank you for your thank you for your submission, uh, Aristocrat. It has been it has been helpful and uh, guiding. Okay. Anybody else who have anything to say or any comments? Yeah. The the point is that like what Aristocrat have said. I mean, they took advantage of the man, the father of the boy. You understand? If they say that okay, the father of the boy is a professor, is one of the politicians. They won't do what they were doing to the boy. And even after the death, you understand, the, boy, the father is, uh, is not exposed to some of these things. So first of all, when something happens to you and you are not exposed, you'll be confused. That is why some of this delay came in. And they took advantage of all of these things because they have been in the street. The people involved in this things, they have been in the street. They have read their family, they have seen everything, who are they? They can't do anything. They never knew that people will even took up this matter this way. They are plan just and let's just eliminate this guy and go away. You get so what they did is when you when you that is why it's good in a family have someone that is I don't know I'm going to put it someone that is well educated also exposed to if somebody like that like the man's brother is a professor or something they would do it like that to that family. You understand? I think that is my contribution this morning. Are you sleeping?